am today delivering to each of you copies of the executive budget, which anticipates the need for no new taxes, reflecting my suggestions for spending in the 1972-73 biennium, accompanied by an extended analysis of these recommendations. In another written message, I am summarizing a number of my suggestions for new laws, amendments to existing laws, and administrative procedures of general interest. Third, I am hereby noting that other significant topics will be covered in special messages as promptly as they can be prepared or when a reason for them develops. Well, it's a very complicated, complex uh, new innovation in state finance. Uh, $450 million of general revenue bonds to pay for the state spending for the next two years to be repaid for the next 20 years. Uh, I've got some serious problems about whether this is a sound financial approach to state government. Uh, I was very proud to see that he supported uh, the federal government assuming a 100% cost of the welfare program. I hope this can uh, become a political reality uh, during the next uh, two years.
the Australian government as a government doesn't take any position on long hair. That's a matter for uh, the boys to decide for themselves. Uh, if they are of good character, uh, they'll be welcome in Australia. We wouldn't want to have uh, young men coming in who are going to uh, bring in drugs and propagate drugs and that sort of thing, but long hair as such doesn't give us any problem. So James, what are your immigration policies? Basically, anybody who can uh, uh, contribute to Australia's uh, life, to our economic opportunities, uh, is welcome in Australia. He rounded the corner and stopped, and we didn't even know that cop was behind us, and uh, and I, I was getting out, and that other one saw the red lights and said, hey, there's the cop behind us, so... That's the first time you saw the police car, they did not pull over because they thought the police were yeah. stopping them, right? Yeah, that's the first time, because uh, we didn't know it was behind us, so, and I said, well, y'all want me to get out and just go on? And they said, yeah, go on, you ain't no troll. So I, I got out and I walked on past the police car and when I did they signaled me in, that officer and that kid in the white shirt. And uh, when I got in told him my story, you know, he said, uh, weren't they going to let you out? And I said, no, no, uh, they thought I wanted off at Hampton, but I wanted off on Stems where I catch more rice. And, and when he got through questioning me, I, I was getting out of the car and that guy walked up and uh, what guy? The guy who'd been driving? The driver. The big old dude. And, uh, and I heard him, the cop say, get your hand out of your pocket. You know, when I was getting out, he said that twice. And then he kicked the door open. I heard him say it twice. Who did you think he was talking to at first? I thought he was talking to me because I looked down and I didn't have my hands in my pocket. And I looked across the car and I saw that guy walking up. And I saw that cop reaching for his gun. And then... And he just shot him twice, and then he shot another time. The trouble with the telephone service in Garland is that you can't get the people that you call for. We can't dial across town satisfactorily, let alone metro service. How does the metro service work in Garland since it was installed? We feel that the metro service is... Uh, comparable to the service we've been receiving for our local service, where we dial two, three, four times before we get the correct number, where we dial and in the middle of our dialing, we uh, the telephone goes blank and we get a dial tone again, and all kinds of trouble getting people to answer their telephone because it doesn't ring for some reason. I think it's a fair complaint. Uh, I've stated that to the city, to the council, and to anyone I could find ever since I've been here. Uh, we have a tremendous program into effect to overcome these deficiencies. Uh, we think that we're well down the road toward doing so. We think a majority of the citizens of this community will agree with us. And uh, we know that uh, very shortly we'll have a, a very fine uh, telephone exchange. Where is Howard Hughes today? I think probably in some nursing home on the west coast somewhere, being treated by some of his own staff that he's had on the payroll for many years. Would you say then that he is in uh, failing health or possibly a terminal condition? I definitely think he's in failing health. In fact, the last report that we had on him, which was on the 12th or 14th of November, the doctor's report showed that he was ill at the time. What about reports that he is in the Bahamas? Well, we've heard about those reports, and when I say we've heard, I mean, I've worked for, for Mr. Mayhew for three years under under him for the Hughes Nevada operations. We did the public relations for them. Uh, Mr. Hughes supposedly was in the Bahamas. Well, we didn't believe it, and Mr. Mayhew sent close to 45 to 50 people nationally looking for him. And we had six or seven people in the Bahamas and in the room, supposedly, that Mr. Hughes was living. The four days that our people were there before they got caught, I mean, there wasn't a sound out of that room. The movies we're using 
would not all be called horror films as such. They have uh, horror elements in them. Boris Karloff, I think, uh, made a very interesting definition of these. He felt that the films he made were really not horror films at all, but rather terror films. The idea being that the word horror was somewhat overused by Hollywood. The difference in the two terms, according to him, was that at the basis of horror, one felt um, disgust, revulsion, a somewhat static sense, whereas in terror, the basis of terror was fear, especially fear of the unknown. Now, filmmakers use both of these, uh, usually together. One to one does not often find a pure horror film or a pure terror film in that sense of the word. Um, what has been the response? Is, what has yeah. been the response on the class so far? Well, so far we've had, uh, oh, I don't know how many people have signed up. Quite a few, I believe. Uh, I did look over the list. I believe they were mostly girls. I recommend to you that we appropriate state welfare funds now for only the first 10 months of the next biennium, which will be to the beginning of the federal fiscal year 1973. By then, it is my belief that our efforts will have been successful and our welfare programs will be federally funded. Well, it's pretty obvious. It looks like there's some uh, political witch hunting being injected into a commercial transaction. As you well know, it's a, it's a lawsuit in the uh, uh, civil courts. It involves uh, some 24 different parties. I am not directly a party to the lawsuit, nor is any one of the members of this house uh, directly involved as a party to the lawsuit. And uh, I think it's most unfortunate that uh, a man would see fit to make such a statement. Do you think that, uh, that there's enough there that you need to have an investigative committee as has been suggested? Well, I, uh, I plan to certainly talk with uh, the members of the House. I plan to visit with the executive department and we'll probably visit with the attorney general's office. We're primarily interested in working with anyone who can assist us in clearing up this matter. And I might add here that in my visit with the uh, uh, security people, which was strictly voluntary, uh, voluntarily, they said, uh, Mr. Speaker, if you had any advanced knowledge of uh, any transactions uh, in this company, it certainly wasn't reflected in, uh, in your statement because uh, I've actually lost money in my dealings with the company and uh, I've always had to work hard to uh, try to make an honest living. And in my mind, it was a, I was a good faith purchaser. I lost some money and uh, I hope that we can clear the matter up as soon as possible. I think I should be candid and say to you that uh, Congressman Wilbur Mills, who is the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee of the House, and uh, Johnny Burns of Wisconsin, who is the ranking uh, Republican member on the House Ways and Means Committee, are opposed to the surrender of spending power while keeping the taxing power at a federal level. However, over on the Senate side, Senator Russell Long, the chairman of the Finance Committee of the Senate, and Senator Wally Bennett of Utah, the ranking Republican, I think are far more amenable to revenue sharing. And uh, I think, generally speaking, that the climate in the Congress is going to be more favorable. The reason I think it's going to be more favorable is because the tremendous amount of pressure that people like you all have brought to bear on, uh, on your members of Congress to take a favorable attitude toward this.
to me, it's an internal matter uh, of the House to resolve, plus the fact I think it's only right, since we are all under criticism, the entire legislature is under the criticism, that we know exactly what members are involved, which ones, which ones bought this stock, and I think their names should be made public. Do you have information that has not yet come out regarding this as to who, uh, what others could be involved or just how deeply the involvement might be? No, sir, I don't have any names that, uh, of, I have no knowledge of who, who is involved other than the ones that have admitted publicly that they did borrow money from the Sharpstown Bank and did buy uh, uh, this insurance company stock. I was not aware that those people in question were trading in that particular stock. You don't feel that your salesman may have been impressed that the governor was trading with Ling and Company and maybe brought it to someone's attention? Uh, I can recall knowing that the governor opened an account here. I was pleased and would still be pleased to open an account for uh, the governor or any such high official. Uh, beyond that, the details of any activities in his account should have been held confidential by us. I never looked into it, and uh, to this date, I am not aware of any wrongdoing by those people named. Then there was no natural curiosity among the executives of the company to see how the governor was doing? Uh, not by myself. I can't speak for other executives, and uh, I would like to make it clear, I have not had a personal relationship or a business relationship with any of the individuals or entities named in the suit other than the employees of Lingen Company. Did you personally deal in the stock of National Bank of Life? Never on any occasion. First, uh, there's no question that there are certain items that are crucial at this time. Uh, the jail is overcrowded by approximately 100 over what they plan to capacity. Uh, if anyone comes to the uh, courthouse and looks in the halls, they'll see that we've had to stack records in the hallway and partition them. And these are records that uh, we're required by law to keep. Uh, there's a severe problem with reference uh, to the district attorney's office. His office is split between two buildings and the people are demanding stricter law enforcement and prosecution, and at the same time, I feel that they'll see the need to give him adequate facilities to uh, comply with their request. And because of these needs, I feel that they will approve it. Uh, and uh, if they approve it at this time, certainly the expense of the improvements will be less than they will be in the future, and the need will continue and grow. Can this be done without a raise in taxes? Uh, the commissioners and the auditor have studied this problem. They indicate that. Uh, they anticipate if the county continues to grow at its present rate that there will be no need for uh, additional taxes. I'd like to see them uh, get into a program of, of informing the students and uh, possibly even a lot of adults into understanding the, uh, the methods of police action. Tom, now in joining this organization, do you feel that you are maybe going against the grain of some of today's students? No, sir, not really. I feel that the majority of the students would like to, that like the police and would like to get to know them. And I think uh, possibly that the, that the people that don't feel that way do that out of ignorance or just because it's kind of becoming popular now to call the police pigs or whatever. And uh, if we get more students involved, if we get more students involved, then uh, it'll be better, you know, the police will, will understand the police better, and uh, we'll have more people. Debbie, you're going to be secretary of this organization, and there is a great deal of militants, uh, not only on college campuses, but on high school campuses. Is there such a group at Brian Adams? Oh, yes, definitely. There's a, a bunch of kids who think that the police are uh, out to get them no matter what, you know, and I have lots of friends who feel this way, and I'm trying to more or less correct this by being in this organization so I can present to them that policemen are friendly and everything.